Headline, I'm in love. The worst thing that a, a network executive ever said to you when you were originally shopping, Will and Chris. Uh, we were asked after we read the pilot, take this note in, don't react, but what do you think about not having Will be gay? <laughs> Cameos. How about uh, Jared Kushner? Yeah, yeah. I'd like Jared Kushner to he, be sitting in a gay bar with Jack and Will. It's yeah. the height of the election. Yeah. You say to your husband, uh, you think of a joke that you would have written for the show yeah. if it were on. Yes. And he says, well, we have the set. Yes. I wanted to write a joke about Karen working out Rosario on a rock climbing wall. And uh, I, in the event that the wall ever gets built, right? Because Karen would want she'd be able to. Yeah, she would want Rosario at work on time. You know, she didn't really wouldn't care about the wall going up, but it was just getting her back to New York on time for work. And I'm just kind of talking about this, and my husband says to me, uh, "You know, we have the set right now. It's in our storage. You could probably tell that joke. You should call David." And um, uh, that's what I did. I went to. Uh, I went home, I called him, and I said, if I can get them to say yes, do you want to do this? And, and, and I thought, if I say no, Max will yell at me, so I'm going to say yes. I, I actually asked them, could I get you guys to be in the same place at the same time to read a script? It, it's one thing to get them to all say yes, it's one thing to get them in the same place at the same time, mm. and that was the miraculous thing. We weren't coming from the place of a reunion. We were coming from a place of um, active people who care very much about the country. And uh, I knew uh, that all of us were very concerned about what was happening. So. Um, and, and, it was, and the set was going into deep storage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or so being sold off for parts because it, you never know. NBC yeah. could use the cash. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're doing okay. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, well, that's what I think. So it was like a, a last, like one last hurrah. That was your thinking at the time. Not twelve uh, eps. Right. Oh no. my God, no. We we really just thought that we 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 had the set, and if you guys can come to work on a date, we will make sure that there's a lot of security and nobody will find out about it and we'll just do this and then we'll go on our way and it will be our effort uh for mrs clinton and and that that's what we wanted to do you know so then when did it turn into a season of sorts well after we we filmed the thing you you know it, it came together they they so we wrote them uh um and we went off on our day um, by the time I got home, I wrote them an email at about five o'clock uh, um, at the end of a day, and I was home at 545, and there were four emails, four yeses. You know, there were maybe 250 people in the audience. There was the, there was the crew, there was everybody. Nobody said a word, which goes to show, unlike the White House, if you believe what you're doing, people don't leak. <laughs> Mom, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but this is who I am. You could never disappoint me. I just want you to be happy. Looking back on it, there have been clues. <laughs> You've said the goal of the show is not to preach, never. right? Story comes first, character Always. comes first. Mm -hmm. yeah. But is, will there be an obligation to address where we are in the country, who's in the White House? Certainly in as much as they all live in the world in 2017 and they all have their convictions, you can't not address it. But you don't, what you don't want to do is put out an ideology or put a, that's not the purpose of the show. You have characters who feel a certain way and those characters should be true to who they are. That's our thinking. Yeah, I don't think, we don't have an obligation to write about politics. We have an obligation to the show and the nature of the show and what it was and what it will be. And it's always been 
a, a, a show, a story about these four people that are in this world and talk about stuff that's in the world that we're in right now, whether it's uh, ballet, Broadway, or the White House. One of the reasons that people are excited to have it back is that in this, in, in this time of like uncertainty and deep anxiety, it was familiar and comforting and funny, these characters, to those who liked it. And, and, and I don't think they, if I were a fan, I wouldn't necessarily want them to change radically and have their views change radically at all. I would want them to be them. That's what, that's what comforted me. Right. That's what I enjoyed. Have the lines moved to where you could write what you couldn't write before? Yes, they have, and you can you can deal with things and subject matter that maybe would have been a little more taboo. But in some ways, you know, in some ways, things have actually gotten a little more oddly restricted in terms of uh, um, you know politically correct language or this kinds of thing. But really, I really think one of the things about about sitcoms is. Not is finding ways of saying it without saying it, letting the audience figure out what it is. Two plus two equals is our job. It's their job to say well, that's, five. That's Jack and Karen's, <laughs> right? right? That's their bread and butter. Yeah. Yes. Are you Karen? Yes, honey. Well, Peter, Paul, and Mary, you are fabulous. <laughs> I love that we have to play by the rules, the same rules that we had to play by, because that's the, the language that we. Um, honed and worked on and, and uh, made our craft for the first eight seasons of the show. And uh, I wouldn't want to be able to use explicit language or to take it uh, because to, to a place that the show should not be. Mm -hmm. The show should be an American piece of entertainment that is available to um, whoever is able to turn on a television and get the NBC network. You make it sound like mm -hmm. broadcast is like democratic somehow or it's american it, and it feels I, like it is what the show is I, I i think i mean think about it like if this was on cable would there be would there be sex any kind is that funny the only kind of funny sex scenes are really bad sex scenes right like, like that's the only way you would be able to do it what's funny about it if we were more explicit how would it be f as funny I, I don't know the answer to that mm -hmm. Do you think TV comedy has gotten darker in general? People point to Boris and Pete, uh, mm -hmm. Louis, mm -hmm. uh, Aziz Ansari, right? I mean, just wonder if, if in general the tone is, I don't know, edgier, sadder? Yes, and, and, and more real, I suppose. It's That's what less, I think. It's less, more true. Yeah, more, less presentational. And our thing is, it's not bad just because it is presentational. It's fun. It, it doesn't, it, we're not professing to be something we're not, you know, an actual real life depiction of how people live their lives. I mean, it is suggestions of that. It's, it's, a, it, it's an embellishment of that. But I'd love it to be successful for the sake of the art form. Because I you mean I, the multi camera yes, yes. Because it's just like the stepchild of of comedy and people make fun of it and and it, it's it's parodied or in, now it's it, the old uncle you know yeah, you know what yeah I mean? it's just it's the like, embarrassing you know, you know lame way to to uh, get a laugh it's it's like you know uh, your uncle laughing at a commercial but but yep. but but I, I i think that when you have the actors uh, that we have and the writing room uh, that, that we have it should be something that can be considered um um, good, good, high art. You and I broke up. It was for different reasons. I wanted to raise the kids Jewish. You wanted to sleep with men. <laughs> Best burn ever on the show. Uh, Best burn on the show has got to be getting sued by Jeff Zucker. That's a good one. That was hilarious. Um, uh, I just remember the very first one that Karen ever made. Honey, what's going on with your hair? It looks like you've got moose and squirrel in there. Funniest show out there right now. There. That's not Will and Grace. Veep. Veep, curb your enthusiasm. Has anyone begged you not to revive the show? The only person who begged us to not revive the show is sitting next to me. What do you binge watch? Um, Handmaid's Tale. 
Game of Thrones, Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow. Mm -hmm. That's gonna work. She's, Rachel's gonna like that. Hey CNBC fans, I'm Carl Quintanilla. Thanks for watching CNBC's Binge on YouTube. You can subscribe by clicking right here. Watch all of our interviews on the changing media landscape. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch more from CNBC. Thanks for watching.